All right, so the stator is underneath the flywheel here in these old V4s, and you have these two harnesses, one on one side, one on the other, and both of these go up to the stator, which is under the flywheel. I'll show you pulling that out later. On these particular engines, these V4s, this older one, you have these CDI units here, and this has a plug connection that comes from I have to have the voltage from under here under the stator to actually be rectified to fire the coil. So I have my coil wires, all my coil wires plug into the coils on the other side. So this fires two cylinders, the one on the other side fires the other two cylinders. So to test no spark in two cylinders or you've got an engine that won't start, you have no spark, it's possibly the stator. So an easy test of that is most stators, when they fail, they short open. So I've got three wires here. So I've got a, a like a tan wire, a green wire, and a blue wire. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do an ohms test to see if I have continuity. So let's see what we get. So I'm gonna put my multimeter on ohms. I'm gonna take one lead and I'm gonna start with the white lead. I'm gonna take my other meter lead and I'm gonna put it to the green wire. So from green to white, I have about 33.8. So I'm gonna write that down. I wanna then switch over from the white wire to the blue wire and see what we come up with. 33.1, 33.2, pretty close. Now what we're gonna do is go from green to blue. And so what we run out here. 66.1, 66.2. So there's your simple test. That's your test for testing for resistance so this is a real easy way to test for resistance we'll just compare it to the other side and then i'll show you what the results are okay i'm going to go to the other side i'm going to test from white to and it's actually blue and white and this side it's actually looks like it's tan with a black tracer and we'll go from that wire to blue first so let's see what we get Then we'll go from white to green. Let's see what we come up with here. 33, 32.0. And then the last one is green to blue. Or green with a white stripe to blue. My guess is it's going to be about 66 when I come around there, and it is. This one's actually reads 64.1. Being a really old engine, that's not surprised. I'm not surprised by these numbers. So um, I'm pretty happy with that. So in this application, it looks like this. Now you also have the other windings. Um, they create the electricity that is then stored, rectified in each of these power packs, and then they are distributed to the coils. So we put our meter back on ohms. It's an auto ranging meter, so I'm just gonna see what the value comes up to and compare it to the other side. So this side is about 550 ohms. 
okay? And I want to check the other side as well, so I'm going to do that. Yep, 550.9. So within one ohm of resistance. So I've got good trigger windings, I've got a good stator, I've got good ignition components here. So I hope that helps you test how to test the Johnson V4, an older one especially when you're trying to figure out what's wrong with the engine. Okay, I want to go over pulling the flywheel off of this Johnson V4. This is an older one, um, probably from the 70s, uh, early 80s. But anyway, you got to take the flywheel off. So grab an impact gun and get an inch and 5 16 socket. It's a big nut. You might have to borrow it from your buddy. But it is an inch and 5 16 Get that off of there. You're going to need three fine thread 5 16 bolts that thread into the flywheel. You're going to take your puller and you're going to put this on here. You're going to get some longer bolts than one I have here with some washers and you're going to thread those into the flywheel. So again, it is 5 16 that's the diameter, and that's fine thread, 24 pitch. So use a flywheel holder tool and that will hold the flywheel and then use a breaker bar that's the proper way to do it but a lot of times it's friday afternoon i'll use an impact gun on this once the flywheel pops loose then you can simply pull the flywheel off there's a lot of magnetic force to this to the stator so work it straight up and off and there's the stator so inside, while you're at it, look to see if any of the magnets, all right, if there's any damage in here, inside the magnet. And then there's another magnet in here, which is for the trigger winding. So the ones in the center are the ones that trigger the power pack to fire the coil. This is the stator windings that creates electricity for the ignition coils, as well as for the charging of the battery. So if I ended up with an ohms test that told me that the stator was bad, I pull the flywheel off and then I got to take these four bolts off. These are 5 16 so it takes a 5 16 socket. Take out. Break them loose first with a ratchet just to make sure that they're not going to strip out in the power head on you. These have been out before, I know that, so I wasn't too concerned about it. Take the bolts out, unplug the stator. You got one more bolt down here, which is gonna hold the stator in place. That's gonna be a clip. And then you've got the harness that runs to the other side. That's gonna have to be disconnected. And you have to unplug the Amphenol connector over here as well that goes in that grounds it. So I'll grab the Amphenol tool and I'll show you that. So the Amphenol tool, there's a whole bunch of manufacturers that make these. These I've had for a long time. These were made by OMC. And you have one removal tool that actually fits into the pin. And then you have another tool that will reinstall the pin back into the connector. It actually fits back this way into the back side of the pin and it will drive it back up. Put a little bit of alcohol, um, regular rubbing alcohol on the connector before you put it back in. You want to put a little bit in the hole. It helps lubricate and slide the connector back up. So I'm just going to take that tool. I want to get that black wire out because that's the only one I need to, I need to remove and then just push it on through. And there you'll see the pin has come out the other side. And I'm gonna just push it the rest of the way and then I can take that pin out. So what you'll see is, you'll see that special tool, all right, fits inside the pin and is the exact right size for that. So the other tool to reinstall it fits over the back side like this and it pushes up on that shoulder. 
So you really do need this tool to put the actual Amphenol connector back into the holder. So take the connector, start the connection back in. Take the tool, put it over the connector and hold it with your finger. A little bit of alcohol at this point comes into play and then slide that pin back in. And what you want to do is you want to look to make sure that that pin is equal with the ends of the other ones. So I still have to go just a little bit more. Usually if the tool's made correctly, it bottoms out at the end of the connector. And then you know that the pin is in the right place. So it's at the right depth. So this actually tool puts this to the right depth. And that's what these tools are made exactly to do. So having these is really, really critical for this. So this old part number 322697 is the installation tool and OMC 322609 is the actual removal tool. But they make aftermarket ones of these that you can purchase. Okay, so that's how you take an Amphenol connector apart. So once I've done that, I'm gonna take the Amphenol connectors. I've got the four bolts out of my stator. I can simply remove my stator at this point and I can replace it. Okay, so that's how you take the stator out of an old Johnson V4. The voltage regulator in old Johnson's, to get the voltage regulator out, if it's not charging, you have to remove the flywheel. You have to pull the stator out of the way. So you have to get that out of the way. And then that is the connectors that attach here to that bracket over on the starboard side. You have to take those screws off that come from the voltage regulator. You've also got another harness that runs over, which is the output that is going to actually go to the starter solenoid over here. So follow that wire and disconnect it. Once you've done that, five, six bolts and the regulator comes out. So we'll pop that out next takes a 3 8 socket for those bolts. I'm going to take those bolts up next. That's it. And that regulator is got a gasket on it, of course, because it goes into the water jacket. And there's the water-cooled voltage regulator okay, on the, underneath the flywheel. So that's how you get the regulator out. All right, if you have to take the trigger out, there's all these flathead screws here. You just have to remove these or these clips. There's several of them all the way around. You pick, loosen them up enough, and you can pick those up and swing them out of the way. I've got a couple more over here I gotta move. And that's it. And then that comes off. So that's how you take the trigger off. 